Hi, this is Jared from ShoeGnome, and today and over the next couple of videos, I want to talk about design options in ARCHICAD 27. Design options are a huge new feature in ARCHICAD, and they're one of those features where once you start using it and understand its power, you never want to go back to a previous version of ARCHICAD that doesn't have this feature. I know there's some concerns that there hasn't been a lot of new things in ARCHICAD over the past couple of years. Design options is kind of groundbreaking for ARCHICAD users. And if you're on ARCHICAD 23, 24, 25, 26, you want to jump to 27 to be able to use design options. Okay, let's, let's talk about them. So first of all, you can get to design options by going up to document design options, design option manager, or over here, design options is the palette. You can see I've added a keyboard shortcut, command F1. I highly recommend you add a keyboard shortcut. And then uh, you can also add it into your uh, toolbar. All of this stuff is in my updated work environment for ARCHICAD 27, so you can just go get that. And I should also say like and subscribe to, all the, to the channel and like the video, and then also download the template because everything I'm talking about is available in the Shunome Open Template version 27 and beyond. Okay, so design options. Let's open up the design option manager. There's a couple of terms that you need to understand to use the design options properly. There are design options, design option sets, and design option combinations. So design options are the individual design options, right? This is where the work is done. The design option sets are groups of design options. And then design option combinations are combinations of different design option sets. So let me jump to a different file and this will make more sense. Here's a file we're going to talk about maybe in this video, maybe in the next one. I have a bunch of design option sets. Each set has a bunch of options. So for instance, this labeled options here, this is a design option set. And then all of these guys are different design options within that set. Okay. Now over here, we have the design option combinations. And depending on the combination, you can see different things are on or off. So for instance, option one has option one turned on. Great naming here. Option one turned on, it has existing garage access turned on. It has the water heater and shower turned off. It has this linen turned on, et cetera. Now I'll just highlight these so we can see. What I have highlighted here is what's on in option one. So now if I go to option two, uh, you can see option two is highlighted here. Uh, it's grayed out, but this is on in option two, instead of the linen, I have the laundry turned on and I have bedroom entry options two turned on, et cetera. So you can go through and you can see if you pause the video, that as I go through all these different design option combinations, different groups of things on the right are turned on and off. So that's the basic thing. You've got design options, design option sets, design option combinations. Now the thing with design options or design option sets is you can only turn on one design option per set at a time. So I can only see design option one or design option two. I can't see one and two. And that's part of why I start having things broken out is because I want to be able to turn off different things in combination. Now, if that sounds frustrating because you want to see option one and option two together, there's a couple ways to do that. One is in the design option manager, it's really easy to drag things into different design option sets. So now I have design option two in this other design option set. So I could turn this on and have design option one. And if I move it back here, you'll see I can't have both on. So you can move things around temporarily if you want to see multiple things on. The other thing you can do is trace reference. So here's design option one. I can right click, shows trace reference, and it's grayed out and it's hard to see. So if we go to trace and reference, make the fills transparent and then make the reference one orange. Now you can see design option two in orange. So I can go up here and now see how it relates to design option four, design option five. So there are ways to see multiple options at the same time, but you can't have two physically like on. Okay. There is a lot more to the basics before we get into kind of all the cool things you can do with it. So back here, one of the things to note that's really important is you can make uh, new folders. You can rename them. You can delete them. You can do new ones. But the best thing you can do here is this, which is duplicate. 
And this just takes all of the option and makes another version of it. So I just duplicated option seven. And if we go to the floor plan and see this is option seven, we now go to option seven A. That's what option seven A looks like. It's the same thing because we've just duplicated it. Now let's delete that. Um, of course, like all things in ARCHICAD now, when you delete it, you can move things to another place or you can just delete the elements. So we're just going to delete the elements. Now, say my client decides that option final is the right one. Um, I can select this and hit accept and merge, and it will delete all of these and move the final to the main model. So it basically gets rid of the, the option. I don't want to do it because it's going to mess up the file, but if, you, if I hit accept and merge, it will delete all the others and merge out the main model. Speaking of which, there is a main model. So we can turn on and off all of these options, but the main model is always going to be there in the file, always on. Next thing to talk about here is this pencil. Or let me back up before we talk about that pencil. In the design options palette, here's all the design option schemes with all of their design options in there. We're not looking at design option combinations. Those are here in my work environment or over in the quick options palette or bar at the bottom of the screen if you have the quick options bar, which you shouldn't because quick options bar is worse than the quick options palette over there. Anyways, so here's all our different schemes. We can turn them on and off by clicking on the eyeballs. And then we can also double click on one and you'll see the pencil moves. Whichever one is highlighted and has the pencil on it, or it's not even highlighted, whichever one has the pencil on it, that's the active design layer. So if I just draw this wall, this wall was put on option four. So if I go to option five, it disappears. So it's on option four. Uh, if I have the main model highlighted and now I draw something, now I go to option five, this new stuff stays because the main model was what was active. So that's what the pencil does. The other thing here is if you select an element, you can select a scheme, sorry, an option and say, you know what, I want this to be on option five. Down here, there's relink. You hit relink, and now it's moved there. So let's move it back to four. I selected it, relink, back to four. OK, next we can fade the environment. So basically, we can fade everything that's not on the active option, whether that's the main model, whether that's the option we're on. And then, of course, you can set it to custom colors, original colors, whatever you know, whatever you you want to do. You can even kind of make it go to zero. So basically you're making the main model not visible. Okay. So we can fade the environment, which is nice. The other thing we can do is edit default only. So when we click this button down here, whatever has the pencil, that's the only thing we can edit. So if I select everything and delete it, we're only deleting that option because that's the only thing I can. I can't select this wall because that's part of the main model. If I un undo edit default, now I can select it. So one of the things I find is fairly useful is turning on edit default only when I want to, want to make sure I don't want to mess with anything. And then also fade environment when I want to be able to see what is in the active option that I'm working on, because sometimes it can get confusing. So how it can get confusing in this project, it's a really, really simple interior remodel, basically just doing bathroom, closet, bedroom, moving a door. But there's a lot of complexity into what we're changing. So I've got a lot of bathroom options. And then within each bathroom option or within each scheme, I want to mess with like the linen here or this door. And so I found what I did is I started breaking up the model. So for instance, here, this existing garage door right here, I put it on its own scheme or I put it on its own design option set so that I could just turn it on and off. Similarly, in the garage right here is a water heater. And so I turned that on and off separately. Now you notice this wall disappeared. Why that is, is that wall, even though it's existing, shows up differently in so many schemes. I found it best to just put this as part of the schemes rather than part of the main model. Uh, similarly up here with this linen, right? I have this linen, but sometimes I want it to be a laundry. Sometimes I want it to be this, and sometimes I want it to be this. I'm not sure what's different about those at the moment, but I wanted different linens because I wanted to be able to talk with a client and be like, here's one option, here's the other, here's the third, they all work. And uh, actually that only works with certain 
door schemes, but you can see not all of these options work together, but here option three linen, option three laundry all kind of work. So there's this really fine grain mixing of options that are allowed there. And so I don't see any reason not to just have like an insane amount of options because they're so easy to, you know, hit this button here and duplicate them and also break apart the model to try different things. So I ended up being able to show this client so many variations. Similarly down here with options five, B, C, D, and E, you know, these are really subtle differences, but they're all, you know, I made one, I duplicated the scheme, I made a change and it's all there, all in the model. And then in the end, the client, you know, picked uh, this version. And so this final scheme has, or this final design option combination has all the stuff turned on that she wants, all the things turned off that she doesn't want. And so I could go through here and say, accept, 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 and get rid of all this stuff. But I didn't do that for this file for illustrative purposes of this video. Okay. That's the basics of design options. We're going to wrap up this video now. In the next video, I'm going to show some other projects and how I'm using design options for that in some creative ways, some standard ways, and some atypical ways. And then in future videos, I want to talk about design options and modules and design options as part of your template. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope you like this video. Leave questions and comments, please. And as always, download the template, the Shunome Open template. That's where all of this stuff is, is baked in. Thank you very much.